raising awareness on four continents. The first week would be North and South America and the Caribbean. The second week, Africa and Middle East. The third week, Europe and North Asia. And the fourth week, East Asia and Asia specific. And there will be not only walks, there will be hundreds of events and educational seminars throughout the world, increasing awareness. And the venue for 2014, the start and finish will be at the Bay Street Esplanade, right opposite government headquarters and right in front of our pristine beaches for the whole world to see. And the route this year is from the Esplanade and loops through Bridgetown and back. We want to thank our running guru, Mr. Eric Clark, for his preparation of the route last year and who has been instrumental with the team in adding this year to, to this year's walk for the very first time, a time 5K run with great prizes, I'm told. So all the running enthusiasts can enjoy. Mr. Mr. Clark is very passionate about running. He's, he's, he's even here at the head table in his running gear, providing me with a, a, a printout of the map. I know he's upset with me by just talking about the route through Bridgetown and back because he had to go painstakingly and measure all the corners paint the route, put the 1K, 2K, 3K, 4K, 5K mark, make sure the water stations are there. So he's very instrumental in making this a, a, a success. And we want to thank him for his efforts. So whether your step is a peaceful step or a pur purposeful step, let September be the month we all do our best to increase the awareness about these below the belt cancers. They've even renamed it Step-tember. Because the step doesn't have to be a physical walk. It can be steps of just increasing awareness online, social media, posting a picture, telling your friend, get her pap smear, simple things. And one step can make a world of a difference. Yeah, well, breast cancer, well, it is true that breast cancer is the number one women's cancer in the Caribbean. And if you look at the mortality in red, blue is the incidence, red is the mortality. Less than 25% of women diagnosed with breast cancer will die as a result of the disease. And that's because the Cancer Society and their cancer awareness programs have been doing a great job in advocating screening with mammograms, and we're picking up these cancers early and offering treatment to cure women, to prevent them from dying. But if you look at those three arrows, three of the major below the belt cancers, cervical cancer, uterine cancer, and ovarian cancer, look at the mortality in red. Over 50% of women diagnosed with cervical cancer here will end up dying because of their disease. More than 60% of women with ovarian cancer will end up dying because of their disease. And if you looked at these five cancers collectively, the incidence is just as much as breast cancer, but with a higher mortality. Yet we don't hear as much awareness about it. And this movement to end women's cancer is supported by internationally by gynecologists, gynecological oncologists, doctors, as well as cancer survivors. <laughs> and this is a clip from one of the promotional videos that Globathon International is trying to get up there. They've asked each country in the world to produce just a three or four second clip. And they're gonna amalgamate all of those clips together to show cancer survivors. And you can see it, just that little three second to see the fight that these women have. And with the formation, with me returning, they, they formed a, a, a gynae oncology tumor board. This was established in March 2013. And this is where you have a multidisciplinary approach to plan the care of women with complex cancer cases. So you know when you come to a clinic, you get diagnosed with cancer by the gynecologist. You have to then go to the anesthetist, the oncologist to plan chemotherapy, the radiologist to get your CT scan. What we allowed that patient to do is to come at one visit and get all those services offered to them at the same time. And we as professionals could sit down just like this and discuss the management for these complex cases so that you don't give her a one-week appointment to see somebody else. They give a two-week appointment to go and get a CT scan because when it comes to cancer, time is of the essence. And you don't have to run rubbing. And, these, and, and, and it showed that we were improving the quality of care that we offered. And this tumor board became Continuous Medical Education Accredited by the uh, Medical Registration Board. 
In January 2014, we have a colposcopy clinic, which is our cervical cancer prevention unit. And we actually started seeing gynecology oncology patients there. It's a smaller setting, and you may be wondering why, why a smaller setting, but it allows the patient to receive specialized attention in a comfortable and personal manner without having the added stresses of a busy general clinic catering to scores of patients, pregnant patients, patients with fibroids, you know, diagnosed with cancer, very sensitive. And, and then coming into that close-knit area, you form a personal relationship. So you're no longer a patient, you're a family of the unit. 